In the 1970s, cable TV was in its infancy, and in Columbus, Ohio, there was an idea by Warner Cable for an experimental two-way multi-program cable television system that played a significant role in the history of American interactive television. This experiment was called Cube Network. Cube introduced viewers to several concepts that became central to the development of modern television today. Pay-per-view programs, special interest cable television networks, and interactive services. Cube was on Channel 3 of Cable TV Networks, and on December 1st, 1977, a breakthrough show began airing, a new show called Pinwheel. The show was similar to Sesame Street, complete with live-action skits mixed in with shorts from independent animators. The show was met with immense popularity, and Channel 3 would even go as far as to rename the network Pinwheel. The show starred human characters like Kim, played by Arline's Miyazaki, Sal, played by Betty Rozek, and Smitty, played by Del Engel. Sal and Smitty were an elderly couple who ran a local newspaper called The Daily Noodle. One of Smitty's obsessions was to get a photograph of the elusive Admiral Bird, with intentions of placing it on the front page of The Daily Noodle. This was a long-running gag that saw Smitty constantly missing out on his opportunities to capture the photograph of the bird. Another character was Jake, played by George James. Jake enjoyed music and his hobby was collecting unusual sounds in small boxes. Francie was another of the human characters and she was an artist in the show, as well as a storyteller. She was eventually phased out. The last of the major human characters was Coco and she was a French mime that was played by C.C. Loveheart. As for the puppet characters, there was Aurelia who was a bohemian style character who owned the pinwheel house. She had red colored hair, olive green eyes, purple lips, and frequented colorful headscarves, and large hoop earrings as well. Her personality was friendly and bubbly, but firm when needed. Her nephews were plus and minus. They were twin boys who lived in the attic room. The color schemes of the twins were fairly wild and the exact opposite of Aurelia. Plus had black hair and orange skin and Minus had a white hair and purple skin. And as for their personalities, Plus was very upbeat and enthusiastic, while Minus was more thoughtful and easily discouraged. A reoccurring sketch was Minus's attempt to board a spaceship and Plus distracting him and causing him to miss takeoff. The twins' favorite game was Gotcha Last, which was a combination of tag and hide and seek, and this game went on eternally. Some other characters included Silas the Snail, an elder snail who was always on his way to the annual snail gathering, which he would never be able to visit because snails are so slow. He never even made it out of the garden. He would also give virtue to the viewers by telling them to slow down and enjoy life, saying that getting there is half the fun. There were also many others. Ebenezer T. Squint, who was a grumpy green-skinned resident who lived in a dusty basement storage room. He would always pretend to be grouchy and mean, but he actually really enjoyed being part of the house activities. Luigi O'Brien was a produce salesman who ran a small vegetable stand in the backyard of the pinwheel house. All of the produce he sold also talked and sang and had their own personalities, but they were always referred to as their vegetable or fruit names. Other characters included Molly McMole, Herbert, and Lulu as well. They would also get an occasional visit from the bird-like aliens Tika, Gorkle, and Waffle from the planet Zintar. Most of the live-action scenes took place in or around the large Victorian-style boarding house called the Pinwheel House, and it actually featured a pinwheel on one of the peaks. Live actors would frequently interact with the puppet characters. They would discuss various topics and teach lessons, learn colors and numbers, and all of the characters lived and worked in areas within the Pinwheel House. Warner's Pinwheel channel was hugely popular. Warner clearly saw a growing demand for this type of children's entertainment with an educational aspect, so when they purchased the Sat-1 communication satellite, it was only only natural to rebrand the channel to Nickelodeon. Introducing Nickelodeon. Children's programming that's fit for children. 13 hours of programming a day, seven days a week, that will make them wonder, laugh, ponder, and think. 
We took everything that was wrong with children's television and got rid of it. We kept everything that was good about it and made it better. The result is Nickelodeon, the young people's satellite network. With the Nickelodeon rebrand came a reformat of the Pinwheel Show, now into hour-long episodes, typically shown in three to five hour blocks. This format would eventually become Nick Jr. Pinwheel had a total of seven seasons and 260 episodes, many of which are poorly documented. As the program never saw a VHS or DVD release, the show was produced from the years 1977 through 1984, and reruns on Nickelodeon would continue until 1994. Pinwheel is still the longest running show by hours aired and episodes released combined in the history of the network. The program was Nickelodeon's first show, and with it came the rise of Nickelodeon. This was the first step in the rise of Nickelodeon, but it's not what sprung the network to its true potential. Children's programs that revolved around education were becoming saturated, and Nickelodeon began shifting towards more scripted, teen-focused content. A new generation of programming was looming, and Nickelodeon was not afraid to ride the wave. Fresh out the box. Stop. Look and watch. Ready yet? Get set. It's all that. Nickelodeon, innovative, non-commercial cable television programming for young people. Kids are finally getting the kind of television they deserve. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 